and welcome to another episode of the Paradigm Project podcast with myself, Mark Ray. This podcast is designed to help entrepreneurs, business owners, and to be honest, anyone that is willing to listen with their health and fitness. If you are in the game of high performance, longevity, pain-free performance, strength training, nutrition, you name it, and you want to use those elements to make you a lean, mean, fast fighting machine, then this is the place for you. So uh, yeah, buckle up because we have another episode ahead of us. And welcome to another episode of the Paradigm Project podcast with your great host, Mark Gray, and my even better co-host, Little Bella. Now, today's episode is about 2025, which just seems absolutely crazy to even think about, but we are like less than 60 days, less than two months into or from 2025 becoming a reality. So what I want to do is want to spend the next like 10 minutes talking to you about how you can actually make the rest of your year as impactful as you possibly can when it comes to your health and fitness. So if you're someone that has got 10 months into the year and has gone, oh shit, I haven't done what I wanted to do with my health and fitness and I haven't achieved the goals I wanted and I haven't lost those 10, 15 pounds I wanted to or got into shape I wanted to, built the energy, removed my pain, whatever it is. If you haven't got that so far or you haven't got as close to that as you wanted to then this episode is for you because I'm going to give you some some points to think about that you can then go away and then actually hopefully make some pretty decent progress because I see a lot of people and I've seen this online quite a bit in the last last like week or two and the narrative around like the year pretty much being over and people planning for 2025 and almost thinking about their new year's resolutions already and just getting to that point where they're kind of packing up shop and and that's it. Like 2024 is gone, 2025 is around the corner. Let's get ready for Christmas. Let's hunker down, get ready for winter if you're in the um, this part of the world. But like, no, just 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 plain and simple. No, there is so much time left in this year. As of this episode going out, I think there's 54 days of the year left. I hope I got my maths correct. But yeah, so we've got 54 days left of the year. That is, that's a shit ton of time to get some stuff done. Like in 54 days, you can change your life. And it's just as simple as that. If you put your ass in gear and you you put your mind to this and you're focused and you're consistent and you're diligent and you're motivated and disciplined, like your life can change in 54 days. I'm not saying it will change to the point where everything is just perfect or you have lost those 20 pounds you wanted to lose or you've eliminated your back pain which you can do but realistically in 50 days like you can change a lot I've seen it I've seen people create insane progress in a few weeks I've seen it in six weeks so for you to have like six seven weeks of hard work and consistency like you can do some amazing shit. And the best thing is, is that what it's going to do is going to give you like 50 days head start on the people that are going to start on January 1st. So think of it like that. That's that's how I want you to approach this is I don't want you to approach this with the mindset of like, oh, I've got 50 days left, 54 days to make the most of this year, which is obviously what I want you to do as well. That's the point of this video. But the mindset I want you to be very much in is by putting the work in now and by taking action, you are gaining a head start on the version of you on January 1st that just did nothing. Okay, And you very well might be going to the gym now and you might be living a somewhat healthy lifestyle and you might have made some good progress this year, but why not make more progress? Like, why not just really put the bloody pain in the neck and like or in the throat whatever you whatever you say and just really go for it like why not make 2024 the best year possible like that's what I'm trying to do in my business right now and why I'm recording these podcasts and making content with with Bella in the background there is because I'm trying to make the best out of what's left 2024 like I haven't thought about next year at all because I'm just super focused in the here and now. I've got two months left. We've got almost two months left, which is a shit ton of time to do some amazing things, whether your business or your health. And this is going to be health focused. 
so yeah that's the more that's the kind of the mindset i want you to have is just there's a lot of time left and i want you to make the most of it so um let's get into point number one and i've kind of already went through that already and that is just to finish super strong and how we're going to finish super strong is we're going to set some goals we're going to set one goal okay so we're going to get you to set a goal for january 1st instead of doing what people do and obviously they wait to january 1st to set goals those new year's resolutions that i think something like 90 percent of people fail and just never do the, the, the figures after like a month are just mind-blowing in terms of the amount of people that don't do it but i'm pretty sure it's like 90 percent of people don't achieve the new year's resolutions what's the term of the um, the definition of insanity by albert einstein insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result well for you out there that do a new year's resolution every year to give up the fags or to drop those extra few pounds or to join a gym and you're at your 10th attempt this year come on that's um that's insanity defined so yeah what i want you to do is set a goal set a goal that you are going to achieve by january 1st the most common goal is probably going to be some sort of fat loss goal so set yourself a fat loss goal be realistic set it for five if you've got if you if you were going to hit january 1st and you were like right in your head now you're thinking i've got about 30 pounds to lose got about 20 pounds whatever it is how about over these next seven weeks to get to january 1st we say we're going to lose 10 pounds so if our goal in january is 20 pounds let's lose 10 of that now what the hell is that going to do january 1st it's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier i was going to swear there but trying to keep the curse words down yeah it's going to make life a lot easier instead of having 20 pounds to lose you got 10 pounds to lose so set yourself a goal now and keep at it and obviously that's going to help keep you motivated even though motivation is is just it's kind of bullshit because you need to be motivated we're not going to be motivated motivated motivation goes like that you've heard me say this before like motivation goes up and down and up and down and up and down it's all well and good doing the work when you're motivated but when it's pouring with rain in london when it's cold or it's christmas and you've got all those christmas parties going on your motivation is going to be like down here with bella okay you can't just rely on doing the work when your motivation's up here okay because motivation is going to be quite down there a lot of times so you need to have a goal to kind of keep you keep you on the straight and narrow somewhat um but yeah you can do some amazing things in those 50 odd days point number two is you are going to time block your health and fitness endeavors you've heard me say this before if you've been around my my block for a while if you're an entrepreneur busy exec then you'll have heard me say or talk about the importance of time blocking your health and fitness we're also good at using our google calendar and we have everything in our diary and we have x y and z meetings and calls and talks and all this sort of stuff but you need to put in the same effort to your health and fitness like i for instance have all my training sessions blocked in i have my runs any breath work etc cetera, etc cetera. even now i've put in visualization because i'm doing visual visualization every morning it's my new practice i've started and that stuff goes in my diary because if it doesn't go in your diary it doesn't get done so start putting shit in your diary go for walks time to cook time to buy food stretch and all that sort of stuff running put it in your diary point number three do a personal health audit so this is quite simple it's just going to come down to you doing a bit of a a bit of an mot or a car service for your body and your health so you're just going to take check of how you're doing easy ones to measure breast and heart rate blood pressure um body weight of course and then any sort of measurements that you want to take as well if you want body 
uh, progress pictures as well. So it takes some progress pictures with your phone. Yes, for some of you, it might not be the most enjoyable experience, but if it's not an enjoyable experience, it's a sure sign that you probably need to do it. Okay. So do a bit of a, a check. How are you sleeping? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you averaging seven hours sleep a night? If you're down like five or six, that's something that needs to be improved upon for the new year. Also, what kind of aches and pains you have? Do you have any injuries? Is your energy super low? Things like that. Just take a bit of a check of that. Jot it all down so you have more information and more data. And then again, it's just giving you things to work on. So then you can go into the new year feeling bloody epic. Point number four is when it comes to things like events and social events, because we're in silly season soon, Halloween's out of the way and now it's into boozing and bloody Christmas games and Christmas events and social events. Obviously, December, November is a busy, busy time of the year. So you need to have some sort of rules to kind of get you through that. One of the easiest one I would advise is calorie banking. Okay, nice and simple, bank your calories. In the same way that you bank your money, and you do that maybe for future investments. You put it into a nice little interest, a 3% interest account, and you keep it in there to beat inflation. Or you put it into some stocks and some ETFs, or maybe some crypto if you're really wild. Uh, or you just like to lose your money. P.S. This is not any financial advice. Do not take what I am have said on board. But um, yeah, calorie banking. Yes, bank your calories. So social events usually require more calories and or as in they usually involve more. They do require more calories as well, which is actually what I'm going to say in a minute, but they involve more calories. We eat, we drink more and just generally at Christmas and around those times we, we drink and eat more. So what do you want to do? You want to give yourself an allowance and that's what calorie banking is. Very simple. If I have 2000 calories a day to eat to maintain my body weight or maybe achieve my calorie deficit, Seven days of the week, that equates to 14,000 calories. Quick mats. But what if I'm going out on Friday and I'm going to get pissed and I'm going to eat a lot of food? I'm like, to be honest, my calorie income on that day might be something like 5,000 calories if we're being generous or if we're being lenient. So how do we get around that without gaining some weight? Because if we do that, we are going to gain weight. Well, there's this magic thing called calorie banking. So what we're going to do is... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is we are going to either slightly reduce our calories. So instead of having 2000 calories a day, maybe we have 1500. So if we've done that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's an extra or 500 calories less per day. Multiply by four equals 2000 calories. There's a reason I got a good grade in maths. And we add those 2000 calories that we've saved to the 2000 calories we would eat on normally normally on Friday. That gives us a total allowance of 4,000 calories to eat on Friday, guilt-free, knowing that we can eat those calories and not really gain any weight. Sounds magical, doesn't it? Now, what you can do as well is go a step further, which is what I like to do, and that is to increase your expenditure as well. So as well as being mindful with your, your calories in the days leading up, you could also add in some more steps. That's the easiest one you can go for. So instead of walking 10,000 steps a day, do 12, 13,000 steps a day. So now what you're doing is you're increasing that buffer. So realistically, what you're doing then is maybe you're giving yourself an extra 800 calories, 900 calories a day. So instead of just 500 from removing that from the food, maybe we've burned an extra 400 calories through, through overall movement. So say we've got 900 instead of 500. 900 by four, 3,600 plus the 2,000 we have for that day, 5,600 calories, shit ton of calories. That means we can just drink all the cocktails and espresso martinis we want and eat two roast dinners, whatever it is, and you won't gain any weight. So point number four is bank your calories. Honestly, absolute lifesaver for silly season and those events. So, uh, yeah, I highly suggest you come at your social events with the mindset of calorie banking. And then finally, 
Number five, my last point before I love you and leave you. And that is have some sort of accountability. Have some sort of support and accountability around you, in your network, in your community, in your environment, because this can be the the game changer and the point that really differentiates you from you this year to you last year. And it's simple because accountability keeps you accountable. No shit, Batman. The most common form of accountability that I know of is someone like me, and that's a coach. I'm not here to sell my services, but having someone like me behind you is going to help you stay accountable on the days you don't feel like staying accountable. If you have someone like me in the background, on the phone, popping your old messages over WhatsApp, like how was the event last night? Or what have you got coming up this week? And are you banking your calories? Or you are in fact actually logging your calories through an app like my fitness pal that I have access to. I guarantee you now that your consistency and adherence to your calorie target and your workouts and your sleep and all that sort of stuff is going to be a hell of a lot better. So if you don't want to get a coach, find an accountability partner, maybe someone at work, maybe your 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 spouse, a friend, whatever, whoever it is, whatever it is. Just find somebody or something, a group maybe, to be accountable to and just share your goals, let someone know what you're doing and have someone to check in with regularly, ideally every week. Again, that's what I do as a coach, check in with my clients every week, every two weeks. But yeah, you need that accountability if you were going to be serious about making the most out of these next seven-ish weeks. Okay, so there we go. To wrap it up, we have set a strong goal to finish the year with. Number two is time block your health and fitness endeavors. Number three, do some sort of personal health audit. Number four is bank your calories. And number five is just find some accountability in your network and environment. So yeah, there we have it. If you do those five things, you will make some awesome progress in the next seven weeks, in the next 54 days, minus a few, because obviously New Year's and Christmas and all that sort of stuff. But even in those days, if you have a goal set and you've been building the habits in the weeks leading up to Christmas, I guarantee you that you will not gain as much weight as you might have done previously over that time. And then you're giving yourself a much easier launch pad come January 1st. Okay, it's not going to be like driving with the gear in reverse or driving in mud with flat tires, whichever way you want to paraphrase it. It's going to be like getting in a somewhat decent Ferrari and popping down the autobahn. Okay, it's going to be, it's going to be smooth. It's going to be fun. So there we have it. Five tips to smash the rest of 2024. As always, if you enjoyed that episode, hit the like button, subscribe, review, share with your friends, share with your fellow entrepreneurs and business owners and anyone and anyone that will listen to me harp on. Okay, that was amazing. Until next time, seeing you soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me.